Hi, George here. In this Affinity Photo 2 project, we'll be taking this image here, removing this background, putting this background in, in its place with some adjustments and ending up at this point right here. Now, this is an old project I did for Affinity Photo 1 about four years ago, and I'm really doing this now on my HDG Photo channel for Affinity Photo 2. Now, before we get into this, if you want to learn a lot more about how to work with Affinity Photo, Take a look at my complete training course for Affinity Photo. I have a brand new course for Affinity Photo 2, and I'll put that link down in the description. Okay, see how this is done. We'll go back to the original image, and we'll start off by removing the background in here. And for that, let's go over here where it says background, right click, and choose duplicate. Gives us a new background layer here. We'll be using this layer as a temporary layer in order to make the best selection that we can around our subject. Now, it gets kind of dark up here and right by the hair. A little hard to see that separation in here. So what I want to do is to tweak our settings in here, our levels, and try to get better separation between the foreground and the background. And for that, come down here, this adjustments button, click on this, and then choose levels. This brings in a new levels adjustment layer right here. And let's just come in, we'll tweak the black a little bit. I'm just adding in more contrast to the foreground. Let's now boost our gamma. That should lighten the background up. We'll go back and forth between these two settings and I think that's a lot better right here. Let's try a little bit of lightness as well. But we now have a better separation up in this area here. So that's what I was going for. Everything else looks even better. So that's fine. Let's just close this down. We'll now make a selection around this copy of her. And for that, we we'll use just a standard lasso tool. So go over to our selection tools. Right over here, it should look like a box normally. Click on that. At the bottom is your freehand selection tool up here. And the tool options come down to freehand. That's what you want. And that's over here someplace. I'm just going to come in and do a freehand selection right around this. I'll stay fairly close into the hair. There we go. Just work our way around. And then across the bottom outside, that's fine. And then back up this side here. Again, staying in fairly close, but not really getting in that far. We may lose some real thin, wispy hairs. There's no way to get around that. But we'll try to keep as much as possible. And then back down to the beginning and then let go of the mouse and here's our selection. There's also a bit of stuff right in here. I want to be able to grab that. To make this easier, I'm going to come up here and click on this button. This is subtract and I'll do a little selection right there and just give us something to work with at that point. So now come down, make sure that you're on the copy background layer right here. And we can now use the refine edge tool. Click on refine and here we go. Now this comes in as an overlay. That's this reddish coloration in here. We also could see this as a black mat or white mat, black and white and transparent. In most cases though, the overlay is the easiest one to use. I'll leave all these settings at their default settings and then take the brush. You can adjust your brush size right here if you need to. This little drop down slider right there, but I think we're fine. And then come in from the outside and brush in from the outside and allow Affinity Folder to go in and find where that edge is. No, do a very good job of this. You get a real nice clean effect. Just work your way in. Sometimes it may take a couple of moves like that to get this just the way you want it. And then just take your time and work around. And I'm going in here and just trying to brush out anywhere where I'm seeing that background show through. It's kind of a grayish look in here. Now here's where this little bit helps right there. Gives me a place to work from. Okay, we'll finish off down this bottom section here. There we go. Okay, let's now do the top area. Well, a little bit right here, a little touch-ups. And then let's go over the top of the hair. Now, I'm not going too far in, as you can see. Just a little ways in, just a little overlap on that. And let's work our way around this side. There we go. Maybe a little bit into here. And then right around or back down here. And this should be okay. If we need to do any cleanup on this, we can easily do that once we get to the layer mask part of this. Okay, that looks good. Let's now output this down here. I'm going to bring this out as a new layer with layer mask. Choose apply. And there's a new layer with layer mask. Looks good. We can now hide that adjustment layer. And we're all set. Now we need to bring a new background in here. Let me show you what I'll be using. Go up here to file. I have it sitting over here on my recent file list. And it's right here, just a nice wood panel look. We'll be using this one. Now an easy way to get it into this project file is to use the place command. 
go up to File, come down to Place, and it's right here. Hit the Open button, and you get this little insertion tool right here. Just click in the middle someplace, and that brings that in. We can then position that where you want it. I'll put it right here. Notice how it comes in on top of the subject layer. I'll grab it and I'll just drag it underneath. And there we go. That's the basic layout now. It's a little bit off to one side. I'm going to use my right cursor key here and just kind of tap that over just a touch. Looks good. Now I want to darken this down so the background isn't competing with our foreground subject. Also, if you notice in here is a little bit of kind of a grayness in here. I want to match this color to that there and get as close as we can to that. You always get the best effect if you can match your background as close as possible to the original background, at least as far as the colors go. So we'll do that as well. So for that, we'll come down here to this layer, come down to our adjustment layer button again. Let's do levels. There's our new adjustment layer. And I'll add a little bit more black in here, just kind of darken it down a little bit. Let's go to our gamma, go to the right, and that darkens the whole thing down a little bit like that. Somewhere in here, maybe a little bit on the light, but not much. And that's looking better, getting a better tone in there. It's not far enough yet, though. We still need to do a little bit more on this. So another adjustment layer. This time, let's go to exposure. And we'll bring the exposure down a bit. And now it's getting closer. It's no longer as bright, so it's not competing with our subject. And that's what I want. And about like this. I want to get it about the same level as the original. A little bit of the background showing right through there. And that's very close. As it's still too saturated, I want to bring my saturation down a bit. Back to our adjustments again. And come down to Vibrance. And then take your saturation and go to the left just to touch on that. And knock down that saturation. And I think something right around in here is just about perfect. Okay, we can close that down. So we've now matched that background. As you can see, very easy to do this. If you want to, you can come in and do more adjustments on your foreground. We can actually go back to this adjustment layer here. Let's open this up again. Double click on the icon. And we can then reset things. So I'll pull the gamma back down so it's a bit more normal. Let's pull the white balance over and the black balance over. So we're back to our standard setting here. Maybe just a little bit more richness on that. Notice how this one is affecting the foreground and the background. See there? It's affecting both, and that's fine in this case. I got the background to match where I wanted it, and I can now come in and just do some tweaking on my values. And I think that's looking pretty good right there. Now, if I wanted this to only affect just this one layer, you can do that. Right click on that and merge down. That would then add that into the layer right beneath. In this case, that's just fine. And I think that looks real natural. And I kept a lot of those little wispy hairs in here. Over here, all these little thin things, we kept those beautifully on this background or place. And if you want to learn a lot more about how to use Affinity Photo 2, I have a new course for this, and I'll put a link for that in the description. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Also, make sure you subscribe. That really does help my channel a lot. I really appreciate that, and I'll see you next time.